In the last video, we created a Linux Mint operating system that was fully installed. And in future lessons, we'll go in and work with Linux, learn about that operating system. But I want to take one more step with this series. I want to talk about importing appliances because there are a lot of resources online that allow you to sort of bypass that installation routine. Do a Google search for OS boxes. And here's the oxboxes.org site. Now, Linux comes in a thousand flavors, right? We just installed Linux Mint, the XFCE version. But you can see here that OS Boxes is going to provide us with lots of different images that have already been installed. So I'm going to choose uh, VirtualBox images here. And here is our list of all the different operating systems that we can install. For example, we have Kali Linux, which I will do some tutorials on as well. Great for penetration testing. Uh, IP Fire, uh, that's used for like as a firewall distribution. Uh, in this case, let's find Elementary OS. That's a good one. Another one that I really like is Deepin Linux. Um, in this case, we'll go with um, Elementary OS. We're going to download the VirtualBox VDI image. And then once we have it downloaded, I'll show you how to configure the virtual machine to actually utilize that VDI file. All right, so I'm going to accept the terms here. We have a virtual box image. It's giving us a SHA-256 hash here, which we won't check in this case. And see if I can find the download. Well, there it is. OK, so we have our little download link right here. This is uh, 5.14 virtual box download. And it's going to take us to SourceForge, which is good. And in this case, I'm going to jump over my VirtualBox Lessons folder. And I've got my Virtual Machine folder. I'm going to create a new folder here. And I'm going to call this Elementary Linux. Just to keep things organized. Again, these VDIs are kind of big. And I'm going to save that. OK, I'm going to pause the video while this downloads. And we can see that this was distributed as a .7z file. So on Windows, you may need to download uh, 7-zip and install that in order to extract it. So I'm going to right click, and you can see I already have 7-zip installed on mine. And I'm going to go ahead and choose Extract Files. And it looks like it's going to create another folder here called Elementary Linux, and that's OK. Well, it created another folder inside of Elementary Linux right here. And if I look in that folder, we have a 64-bit, OK? And here we have elementary OS.VDI. So let's create a new machine for this. Choose a new machine here. And it uh, looks like I'm going to use guided mode. We'll call this uh, elementary Linux. And it's going to recognize that we want a Linux distribution of some sort, 64-bit. Again, is the big determining factor. I'm going to go ahead and give this about 8 gigs of RAM, 8192. Nice round number there for RAM. And in this case, we're not going to create a virtual hard disk. We're going to use an existing virtual hard disk because that's what we just downloaded, a VDI, right? 
And so I'll click Add. Here we are under VirtualBox VMs, Elementary Linux. And apparently I wasn't paying attention when it extracted that. Oh, because I'm under Home Student VirtualBox VMs. So we want to go to Sixty-four bit. There's our VDI file. You can see it extracted out to almost six gigabytes in size. I'm going to choose open, and we're going to choose that, and we'll create our virtual machine. So again, let's go into settings with our elementary Linux, and under system and then processor, let's give it two CPUs because. That's going to make it run just a little bit faster. I find that's helpful. Let's go ahead and start it up. And I'll pause the video while it boots. And here we are at the OS Box's login screen. A Google search here for what are the passwords for these, you know, OS Box's machines is a pretty easy one. You can see there are a couple of users on here. There's an OS Box's user that has a password of osboxes.org and uh, if there's a root user account password osboxes.org so I'm gonna type in osboxes.org as the password again if you're gonna deploy this in any kind of a networked environment we'll talk about that later you'll wanna change that password create a new user and so here we've got a basics guide and it's got help. I'm going to skip that, but I want to see whether or not it goes full screen. So I'm going to hit control, right control, F. And I'm going to switch to full screen. And looks like we're not quite there. So I'd probably have to go under applications and search for display. And here's our primary display. Let's see if we can get it. Okay, so I'm not necessarily prepared to fix the display issue that we have here, but we could, uh, and we'll talk about that in future videos, how to install what are called guest editions that allow integration with the host operating system so it will look a lot nicer and go into full screen mode. That's one of the challenges we face when we start working with Linux. But uh, messing with the display, I'm sure we could figure it out and at least make it bigger to start. Like this one because it's got the dock down here and it's got a lot of great pre-built applications. So again, um, osboxes.org gives you the opportunity to experiment with a lot of different Linux distributions and kind of see what's out there. So thank you for following along with this basic introduction to VirtualBox. Uh, I hope it was helpful and look for more lessons and tutorials in the future.